Hey everybody, so welcome to hair color myths. So some common misunderstandings in hair color. And in this video, we are talking about the lies. There are so many stories that come about in the hair industry. And so many of them are actually based on total crap. There are nothing about stories that have been based on opinion and rumors and old wives tales. Let's set the record straight because so much of it is junk. It's things that real professionals are telling people and not professionals. It's things that we hear from like our grandmas and our moms that people say, oh yeah, this is true. And then I hear professionals telling them like they're facts and they're just made up nonsense. So in this video, I'm deciding to go ahead and share some of this information with you for two reasons. First of all, I want to stop the nonsense. I want us to recognize that there is a science to what we do. And understanding that science and understanding some of the, the information behind the science is hugely important. But also, I want to set the record straight because you guys are going to take a state board. You know, most of you that watch my videos are preparing for an exam and you are going to be professionals. And I want to make sure you have the right information out there. So as always, this is brought to you by Cosmetology Exam Review. My name is Teresa. I'm the owner of The Intentional Classroom and I started Cosmetology Exam Review, which is an online prep program for your state board for theory, regardless of what state, regardless of what textbook. I'll talk a little bit more about it later, but let's get into the, the fables, if you will, the myths of cosmetology, all right? Let's start with number one. If you pull out your gray hair, seven more will grow in to replace it. How does that even make sense? How does it even make sense? Every single hair has its own papilla, its own um, bulb, it has its own sense of nutrients, it has its own everything, right? How does it, it's not like it's a tree branch, it's just sprouting out on its own thing. That's not how it works. Each Every single hair strand has its own source of everything. If you pull one gray ha hair out, seven more are not coming back on you, okay? So just know that. I'm not saying you should go start plucking out the gray hairs, but do know that if you pluck one out, you don't have to worry that tomorrow morning you're going to wake up and you're going to have 14 more hairs. That's not how science works. That's not what's going to happen. So myth number one that's absolutely not true is that if you pull a gray hair out, seven more are coming back to, to haunt your life forever. Okay. Number two. Permanent color lasts longer than demi-permanent. Now this one's like a hot topic that people kind of get irritated at. And I used to say this to my students and I probably even had some teachers that worked for me that would get upset with me when I say things like this, but it's a real thing, okay? Permanent color is not permanent because it lasts forever, right? Have you ever used permanent red and it's just lasted forever and ever and ever? No, that's not how it works. It's permanent because it permanently alters the inside of the hair, right? It actually changes the structure of the inside of the hair. That's why it's permanent, but it's, it still absolutely fades, right? It fades and it fades and it turns into these orangey colors typically. Demi-permanent will typically last longer because you're not changing that structure. It's a smaller molecule that slips under the cuticle layer and is going to just kind of hang out in there. It's going to leave the hair healthy. It's not blasting open the cuticle. Permanent color uses you know, ammonia, and ammonia's job is to open the cuticle. Well, once you blast it open, like once you like rip off a screen door or rip a door off of its hinges, it never sits quite right. And it's the same thing with permanent color. Once you blast open the cuticle layer, it doesn't really fully shut, which means that hair color is going to wash out pretty darn quickly. If you use a demi-permanent color, it's going to last a lot longer. Really, it's going to last six to eight weeks typically. Permanent color doesn't typically last that long, okay? So now the catch is, of course, demi-permanent color is not going to cover gray well. Demi-permanent color is not going to lighten. So you can't always choose demi-permanent color, but do know that if you're going darker, if you're adding shine, if you're just adding some tone, demi-permanent color will last longer than a permanent color will, okay? All right. Let's move on to number three. Number three, you can fix hair that has been damaged by hair color. Uh -uh. You can't fix hair once it's been fried. Okay, my friends, can you improve the look? Yes. Can you improve the texture and the feel? Yes. Have you actually fixed it? No. Now, let me back up one second because there is a newer product out there called Olaplex that does claim to actually repair some of the disulfide bonds out there, right? Jury's still out. If it's really working, it's a newer product. But typically, unless you're using something like that, you can't just put some deep conditioner on it and fix it. That's not how it works. You've already destroyed the integrity of the hair. You've broken the proteins. You've broken the disulfide bonds. Conditioner's not just going to put it back together. 
right? Olaplex has a separate science. If you actually go watch my video on that, I have a video on lighteners and how Olaplex works. It will go into that science a little bit more. I don't have time for that today. Go watch that video. It will go a little deeper, but just by throwing conditioners in it and some proteins and some you know, some structure, that, that's not how it works. You can't just fix it, okay? So you have to be super cautious. Once you fry that hair, it's almost impossible to fix it. You can only improve it and we can improve the feel and improve the look. The only way to fix it is to cut it off. So that's number three. Number four, this one is scandalous. Neutral is brown. That is a myth. Neutral is not brown. Neutral is a level. Neutral is equal parts of what? Blue, red, and yellow, right? Neutral is equal parts of all three primary colors. Can blonde be neutral? Sure can. So how can we say that neutral is brown? Neutral can be brown, but neutral can also be blonde. Neutral can also be black. So neutral is not brown. Brown is actually a level. Brown can be four, can be five. Brown can be red. Brown is not a description of neutral. So just remember, neutral is equal parts of red, blue and yellow. That's all it is. It's not brown. If anybody tells you differently, it is wrong. Your state board will say neutral is equal parts of blue, red, and yellow. Your three primary colors. Just remember that. Number five, the higher the volume developer means longer lasting color. Nope. 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 If you're trying to get the color to last longer, adding a stronger developer is not where it's at. Okay. Stronger developer, what you're doing is you're actually breaking up more pigment inside the hair. That means it's actually gonna last less time because you're putting more holes in the hair. What developer does is it goes in, the hydrogen peroxide goes into the hair strand and breaks up the pigment inside so that light can pass through like this, whip, 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 right? Well, with all of those holes in the hair, it's like Swiss cheese, right? So if you've got a, pair, a piece of Swiss cheese and you pour water through it, what happens? It goes right through. It's the same thing with hair, right? If you punch a bunch of holes into that hair strand and then you put color in it, it's gonna come right on through, okay? So the higher the volume developer, the more hydrogen peroxide is present, which means the more damage you're doing, which means the hair is not going to hold on to the color as long. So increasing the level or the, the volume on your developer is not going to make it last longer. It's not gonna make it stick better. That's not what's gonna happen. It allows you to lighten it further if you're working in virgin hair. That's about it, okay? So just remember that. Okay, halfway there. Number six, color is always safer than bleach. Not true. I'm gonna use my mom for an example on this one. So my mom, when I first started doing hair, always used like double 40 peroxide blonde color on her hair. And I remember when I first started doing hair, I wanted to switch her to like a 10 volume bleach. And she had been told by her former hairdresser, who was an aunt of mine, well, no, you don't want to use bleach. It's terrible for your hair. And in the 80s, that was totally true. We fried hair in the 80s. Guys, lighter has come a long way. Remember, one of the most damaging things we put on that hair is hydrogen peroxide. So double 40 volume is a whole lot of hydrogen peroxide. So if you can use 10 volume hydrogen peroxide in the hair and low ammonia bleach in that hair, it's gonna be way less damaging than double 40 color will be. So color is not always better for your hair. Sometimes lightener is. It's all about what you're trying to achieve and how much control you have over your product, okay? So don't always jump to color because you think it's a safer option. Lightener can actually be safer, especially with all of these lighteners that we have now with these conditioners and these oils and all these proteins in it. So know your product, know your procedures and know the hair that you're working on because color is not always safer than bleach. Number seven, you can't color relaxed hair. That is not true. You can't color or you can't lighten relaxed hair. That's true, right? You should not color hair that's been relaxed with, oh, 40 volume peroxide, but you can color hair with, oh, a 10 or a 20 volume hydrogen peroxide. You can color hair with a demi-permanent color. You can color hair with a semi-permanent color. Don't get into this mindset that, oh, you have relaxed hair. I can never color your hair. That is not true. You just have to be cautious with it, okay? Now, I would never use more than a 20 volume permanent color on it, but you can use a little hydrogen peroxide. You can do a little bit of permanent color. You just have to be super safe with it. If you know that you're the person that's been doing that relaxer, you're not overlapping that relaxer, you're doing it safely, you're conditioning it appropriately, and you're taking care of it, 
you can color relaxed hair. You just have to be careful with it, okay? This is why it's so important that your clients continue to come to you because then you know what's been done, you know it's been treated appropriately, and you know that you're doing what's best for the hair. But don't get in this mindset that I've been told, oh, no, no, you're not allowed to color relaxed hair. It's not true. You just have to do it cautiously, okay? Number eight, this is one of my favorites. You can wash toner off after five minutes so that it doesn't get too dark. <sighs> this used to drive me crazy, crazy. I'd have, I'd hear teachers say to the students, oh, wash it off, it's been five minutes, it's getting too dark. Okay, let's be clear. The formula or the product, the directions of the product typically says 15 or 20 minutes, whatever the directions of the product says. It has that timing on it because that's how long it takes for the molecule to mature. If you don't allow it to sit that long, that molecule might look great that day. It's gonna wash right back out of the hair, okay? So when you're talking about a toner, you really need to let it sit the appropriate amount of time, whatever the amount of time the directions actually say it needs to sit. However, I know you're thinking, oh my God, but I use Shade DQ and it gets so dark and it grabs, totally get it. That's what Crystal Clear is for. Okay, put crystal clear in your formula. Almost every line has some version of clear. Matrix has a clear, Redken has a clear. That's what it's for. That's what it's for. It dilutes that formula. It slows it down for you so that it can process the appropriate amount of time. So learn to use your clears so that you can allow it to process appropriately. But you can't just wash it off in five minutes, my friends. It will not stick. It might look stellar when they leave the salon. It's not gonna look stellar three days later, okay? So you cannot wash toner off after five minutes thinking, oh, it's grabbing, I gotta take it off. Nope, just formulate it correctly from the beginning with your crystal clear, okay? Number nine, corrective color only involves going lighter. No, 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 no. Sometimes it's just as hard to go darker as it is to go lighter, okay? So when we start introducing things like fillers and doing tint backs and having to you know, fill in three steps, if you haven't watched my video on tint backs and having to fill hair, go watch it, okay? I talk about how we fill in steps of three and we add an undertone and all that, go watch it. It will tell you how to do it. That you need to learn to actually price appropriately. You price for every step of the way. You need to educate your clients on why that's corrective color. You need to price it appropriately. You need to book yourself enough time. Just because it's not requiring a bleach out of some sort doesn't mean it's not corrective, right? So just really understand that corrective color doesn't just mean we're stripping hair. It really can be we're going from a level 10 to a level one. That is just as corrective as going from a one to a 10. So understand that corrective color goes way beyond bleaching hair and don't sell yourself short. You're going to need the time and you're going to need the money to do that appropriately. Okay. So number nine, corrective color goes way beyond going lighter. Okay. And finally, number 10, this is scandalous. I know not all at home color is the devil. I guess the myth is that all at home hair color is the devil. I am not advocating crappy at home hair color. I'm really not. But here's what I want to say. The number one reason at home at home hair color is so bad, and I'm probably gonna get comments on my page for this, and that's fine, I don't care. The number one reason at home hair color is so bad for hair is because the developer in that box has to work for level three hair and level 10 hair, which means it's gonna be 40 volume no matter what, which means we are introducing a hell of a lot of, of hydrogen peroxide into the hair, regardless if they need it or not. And what did we just talk about, right? Hydrogen peroxide breaks up the inside of the hair. That's the point of it. And so if you've got my hair, right, I'm about a level 10, right, probably a nine now because I've been going darker a little bit, but I'm about a level nine, 10. I never need 40 volume in my hair, but if I went and got a box of hair color off of the shelf at Walmart and put it on my head, I am putting 40 volume on my hair because it has to work for the girl with level five hair as well. So I'm frying it for no good reason. Okay, so that's one of the biggest problems. The other problem is metallic salts, but it doesn't mean that they're all the devil. They do make some demi-permanence now, some semi-permanence. The biggest problem really with these at-home hair colors is that the uneducated person at home that doesn't know what they're picking up, doesn't know how to use it, doesn't know that they can just put it at the scalp and not pull it through the ends, that's where all of the dangers come into play. So it's about educating people. It's about making sure we are armed with the information and we know, and that we don't just poo poo it and say, oh, it's all crap, it's all crap. It's not even that it's all crap. Some of it is crap. It's not all crap. 
but not everybody can afford to pay our prices and we have to charge what we have to charge. Let's be real. The cost of doing hair is insane nowadays. So it's in our best interest to be able to educate our clients on at least what they can do to feel beautiful still. Okay. So not all at home hair color is the devil, but we have to be able to educate the clients on what's best if they can't afford to come to us. Okay. So that's what I got. Those are your 10 myths. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're looking for some more, just go check it out. www.cosmetologyexamreview.com. So on this guys, I have monthly plans. I have a total package for a year. Um, basically what it is, is it's 75 practice tests. It's 12 explainer videos all sorts of resources for you to prep for your theory state board. This applies to any state, any textbook, it doesn't matter. I've categorized it different. So there's a whole section on just disorders. There's a whole section on just chemicals. There's a whole section on just science. And so I tried to break it down differently so that you can review in a different way. So check it out, see if you think it will help you. Um, I'd love to hear more, you know, leave some comments you know, share this with your friends. Hopefully you found this interesting and, you know, of course, share, do all the things, subscribe to my channel. And hopefully I'm going to be on my game and start to share more videos because I know I've been missing for a while. Things have been cry. Okay. All right. Have a great day.